The pinnacle of technology, the bleeding edge of innovation, Hoka sponsors some of the best athletes on the entire planet. And today, it's going against a boot that hasn't changed design in 100 years. Worn by Charles Lindbergh, King Edward VIII, President George H.W. Bush, President Dwight D. Eisenhower, General Norman Schwarzkopf, the King of Nepal, Harrison Ford, and Robert Redford. This is the first boot to ever hike the entire Appalachian Trail. Today, we're looking at Hoka versus Russell. I am not biased. I made it sound like I'm biased in the beginning. I actually find both of these boots really cool, but we do have to test them, pit them against each other, because we're looking at the original Hoka versus Hoka. Obviously, I'm going to give you the nitty gritty details on how the boot actually feels as I'm walking, because there's a very big difference between how this boot is supposed to treat the ground when you walk and how Hoka is supposed to treat the ground when you walk. But also, more specifically, we're going to get into durability, waterproofness, comfort, lifespan, and finally, why a 100-year-old boot may be all that you ever need. Quick rundown of what you need to know for these two boots. Number one, fun fact, the company that owns Hoka also owns Uggs. Hoka, the Hoka Kaha GTX2 is $240. It was sent to me and is available on Huckberry's website. Check out the carrot link in my bio to check it out. Hoka, if you don't know, is famous because their shoes have an oversized foam sole, an innovation designed to help people run down steep hills and mountains faster. Uh, that is crazy, the difference that you feel. Yeah, it works. We'll get to that later. Here's what you need to know about the Russell Marcus in backcountry. Number one, I made an entire video explaining exactly how they are made. True moccasin construction, I will mention like 10 times. Very, very important. You should watch that video for a complete understanding. They cost $685. They were sent to me by Russell. They are very hard to get your hands on. Thank you to Huckberry and Russell. I clearly couldn't do this video without both of your help. It's there's a lot of expensive boots to walk in the water with. Walking with these boots, the whole point of moccasins constructed like this, true moccasin construction, which means leather on the bottom wraps up, and then we don't really have too many layers between that piece of leather and the ground. The whole point of that is that you can feel the ground better when you walk. So obviously when you're walking through the woods, you have a pretty good feel on the terrain. It's not like these boots are so flexible. I can pick up this twig by crunching my toes and handing it to you, but I can definitely feel a lot more than if I was wearing a pair of Goodyear welted boots or something like that. These boots do feel very comfortable, especially for leather boots. In terms of breathability, it's leather, so it breathes, but not incredibly well. Abnormally comfortable leather boots. That is the big selling point about Russell Moccasins. Something that I really appreciate with these leather boots is that there is a foam slip sole that Russell Moccasins themselves say hasn't broken down in 20 years on boots they've opened to fix and stuff like that. So you get a little bit more cushion, a little more padding. I have not worn the Hocus yet, so that will be the big comparison. Wow, look at that. Nature finds a way, huh? Isn't that just beautiful? That's a slug on my boots. I gotta save the slug. Here you go. Oops, sorry. In terms of how durable these boots are, well, they can take a slug pretty well. I find it very interesting that Hoka obviously has a lot of models without leather, but the Kaha GTX2s are their most premium boot and supposed to be the most durable boot. And they say what makes them so durable is a Nubuck leather outer. So these are completely leather. It's a thicker leather, it's a nicer leather. Really everything about the leather is nicer. I mean, these are $700 boots. So it's not something that should be amazing or like a scandal. These obviously take the cake by a mile long term. Short term is very fascinating, so we need to get into Hoka. Before we get into Hoka, we have to do my favorite part of the video, the waterproof test. Uh-huh. Check that out. Tripod locked in the caboose, dude. I'm worried about you. Why? Well, I feel like you're performing suboptimally because you're not eating during the day. Me? That's impossible. Well, frankly, Michael, I've only seen you eat raviolis for the past two years, so you should try Factor. No going to the grocery store, no chopping, no prepping, no cleaning, none of that. But I like cutting. With Factor's fresh, never frozen meals, you're still getting all the flavor and nutrition that you need. And meals are ready in less than two minutes. Looking for calorie conscious options during the busy season? Try delicious dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. Michael, admit it. You've tried Factor before and you like it. Okay, fine. I love it. And they're cold pressed juices? Fine, fine. I like their cold pressed juices. You can't resist that beet flavor, can you? Oh, Michael. <laughs> I guess I really like the beet flavor. Well, all you have to do is go to factor75.com or check out the link in the description and use our code, the Iron Snail 50, to save 50% off your first Factor box. 
What do you think? The reason that these boots are this level of waterproof and they're leather is because of the true moccasin construction that we talked about before. So the leather wraps up like this. No water is going to get in. Kind of, there's still seams and stuff like that. But there is that waterproof booty that goes like this and folds down. And that waterproof booty, the stitch is on the top, right at the toe box. So water has to sit on top of that toe box in order to come in, making an abnormally water resistant leather boot. They're a little damp, obviously, but nothing too bad. I love these Russell Moccasin boots. They are fantastic. I'm going to keep them for the rest of my life. But now we enter into the world of modernity. It feels like you're putting your foot into a computer. Whoa, okay, going downhill. You really feel a difference. These boots are gonna be a little bit easier than the Russell Moccasins because there is a Gore-Tex booty around them, but you can't go past, obviously, that booty. These boots, whoa. These boots are a different animal. They are waterproof for all intents and purposes for a very long time because of the Gore-Tex booty. I could stand like this in the water for a very long time. To be expected, virtually all ground feel is gone, but it's like a very weird feeling. I can't feel, obviously, sticks or rocks that much. I can feel them a little bit, but it's like I'm walking not on a very soft cloud or marshmallow, but a very like firm kind of stale marshmallow that when you walk, it like compresses a little bit. It's a very cool feeling. I like the feeling a lot. I do, however, miss the ground feel a little bit. I feel like it's disconnecting, but it is insane the difference that you feel. This being Hoka, there are some terms that we need to understand so we can understand how these boots work. The first term is swallowtail. Swallowtail is this giant little like extra butt, this ridge on the back of the boot. They don't go straight down. The reason for that is when you are walking on the ground, this swallowtail is supposed to be the first thing that hits the ground before your foot even hits the ground, softening everything and kind of pushing you forward as you go. And they do say, notice how it's split. That is so you can maneuver, it can flex a little bit as you walk around so it's not stiff and you don't tip over. If you were just walking on a flat surface, you don't notice it. If you're going uphill, you don't notice it. When you're going downhill, you notice it right away. You are rolling down the hill, but you still feel stable. Very, very cool. The other term we need to know for Hoka is meta rocker. I had a bit of difficulty actually finding what this means. Hoka's customary rockered sole works to propel hikers forward, heel to toe, without engaging the muscles used for lateral stability as much. That last part is something we'll touch on later. I think it's the stiffness of the actual boot combined with the outsole rolls you forward essentially without you having to do as much work. Look at that beautiful light over there. <laughs> Gotta get a shot in there. Now the durability section of Hoka's is very interesting because I'm assuming you would think I'm going to dump all over them and say they're not as durable, they're not as this, they're not as that. That's actually not what I'm going to say. So the construction of Hoka's is interesting because these bad boys are built to last you for a very long time. So you have to use certain materials that will also last a very long time. Long-term durability of these boots crushes Hoka's, but when you are wearing the Kaha GTX 2s or whatever, and you are wearing them in their appropriate lifespan, the durability of these is actually going to be great because all these materials, the recycled polyester soybean webbing and everything, the leather outer and abrasion resistant toe cap and heel and everything like that, are built very well and they are very durable but they're not meant to be durable for 20 years 30 years so they will break down eventually these are very nice boots but they're not very nice boots for a very long time which these are and don't get me wrong i am fully aware i am talking about 240 dollars boots versus 700 dollars boots one boot of these is more expensive than both of these so really the true question is what is the better boot? Is there an answer? Yes, there is an answer. But just to break things down, so far, waterproofness. Who wins? Hoka wins in the beginning. Eventually, Gore-Tex can break down, delaminate, whatever. I would say it wins, though. Durability, Russell wins here kind of hands down, but they are closer matched at the beginning of the Hoka's life, and then it kind of goes down when Russell stays the same. Longevity, obviously, has to go to Russell. There really doesn't compare. Comfort, just base comfort. How squishy and whatever do they feel when you're walking? Obviously, hands down, goes to Hoka. The big Biggest question, which one is right for you and which one is better for your foot? I am friends with many incredible athletes, but two notable ones, Maddie and Sasha. They're both runners, they both run marathons, have run marathons, and I asked their opinion on barefoot running, mid cushion running, super cushion running. This is a direct quote from Maddie. She says, I'm so bought in. I was not a believer in the zero drop fad of 10 to 15 years ago, but I'm into the current obsession with Kush. I 
I think she's talking about shoes. I pretty much exclusively run in Hoka's these days, and they probably deserve credit for popularizing the mega stack, big foot foamy cushion that every brand is offering right now. Opposing that, we have Sasha. And Sasha says, I think, and I'm almost positive it's been proven, that the way we are trained to run and move with cushioned shoes tends to cause our form fight, our natural forward movement. I think that is a spelling mistake. I have no idea what that means. Which means, oh, there, there we go. We are expending more energy, but going slower and straining our muscles more. Running barefoot or with minimal cushion allows your form to help you pick up momentum. And finally, my opinion, Michael, who if I run more than five miles, my left knee explodes. When I took the Russells off today, I was walking around barefoot and I could feel as I was walking on rocks and everything, my feet stretching, muscles in my feet moving, and it felt literally like I was doing this for my feet. With technologies like Swallowtail and Meta Rocker, I think we're just kind of reinventing the wheel and where we have muscles and ligaments and things that build up over time that you have to train to get stronger and stuff, we're saying, hey, you don't have to do that because we're kind of doing that for you with these shoes. That is not to say that the technology in Hoka's isn't amazing and helping people run faster than ever before. I think it's the Vaporfly Nikes actually were almost too good. They made people go too fast. So even the most well-trained, strong athletes can get a boost for shoes like that. To be honest, my personal opinion is I really like them both. And I read one post on a running forum that I like the best. Why not use both at different times when you feel like it? I obviously explained that terribly. It didn't just say, oh, it'd be fun to run with both. And I thought, ooh, that would be fun. What it actually said was, you can run in very heavily cushioned shoes, but you should also train with lower cushion or barefoot running or whatever it may be to keep all of those muscles strengthened over time. And obviously I'm relating this to hiking and cushion in general, not just randomly talking about running. So if I personally had to pick a winner, I would pick Russell Moccasins. I love the styling, I love how they age over time. That's much more my thing than Hoka's, but they both have things that I like. So it goes back to that post that I read. If there's something wrong with your feet, Hoka's may be the perfect thing that saved your feet. But also at the same time, I've read things where Hoka did not save people's feet and flat-footed shoes save people's feet. So at that level, you have to get your feet checked out by someone else. That's it, that's it, that's all I have. Um, I hope you like this video. This is the first time I try to do something like this. It's the first of its kind. So if you like it, please let me know because then I will, you know, we'll ramp it up.